Good afternoon. Why am I here? God's purpose for your life. We were created for a purpose. You are not a mistake. You are not just someone that no one cares about. No, in the eyes of God, you are special and he has a great plan for you. The Bible says that his thoughts for you are thoughts of good and not to evil. To give you an expected end. Another version says to give you a future and a hope. God is deliberate about you. People may mock you or laugh at you. But you must know one thing. Which is that God has called you into his marvelous light. This must reflect in how you carry yourself. And how you speak to others. If you want to know the reason why God created you, then this is for you. God did not create a robot. A robot is a machine that is pre-programmed to act in a certain way. However, God created humans with a will, a choice. This was about what Adam abused in the beginning when he disobeyed God. The reason why God did this was because he wants you to love him genuinely from our hearts. God is our father. He is not a wicked dictator. He is not someone who treats us according to how we treat him. The Bible says that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for the ungodly and gave us the free will of salvation. We did not do anything to gain his love, and we can do nothing to keep his love. God's love is deeper than anything that you could possibly imagine. How much do you think God loves you? How he loves you is so much greater than you think. Sometimes we let our own view about God to blind us from who he actually is. This is because we have not taken time with his word. His word is life and his word brings direction to us. There's a reason for everything on earth. There is a saying that goes, when the purpose of a thing is not known, abuse is inevitable. This is not far from the truth. The primary reason why a manufacturer produced a chair is for sitting. If by any chance the chair is only used for decoration, it defeats the purpose of why it was made. Decoration will be secondary, but the primary reason is for sitting. Same way there is a primary reason why God created you. That is what you are about to find out. Many people do not know about this, and they live their life to chance. They say, what will be, will be. Whenever they are not living according to what God has called them to do, sometimes their life it carelessly without even thinking that they will one day answer to God. The fact that God gave us a free will doesn't mean that we are meant to be independent of ourselves. We are dependent on God because he knows the reason he created us. The plant can't be separated from the soil or else it will die. The same way man cannot be separate from God because God is our life and God is our source. These are not just mere words, but they are reality. A plant that is uprooted from the soil will fade away because it gets nutrients from the soil. Your roots are meant to be in God's word. This is how you prosper. The Bible says and Joshua 1 8 that this book of the law 
shall not depart out of the mouth. They shall meditate on it day and night to do all that is written therein. Then shall you make your way prosperous and have good success. We have to understand that your life is hid in Christ. There is no you without him. So you cannot live your life based on your own terms. You have to obey his instructions because he is the only one who created you. Not to the reason why he created you. The Bible says that we are created unto good works. God wants you to reflect him on earth. Is that too much for you to think about? What does it mean God wants you to represent him on the earth today? You are his child and you carry his nature. What is God's nature? The Bible says that God is love. He is the true definition of love. In 1 Corinthians chapter 13, you will see various characteristics of his kind of love. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not boast. Love does not bear record of wrong. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things. You must understand God's nature before you will be able to represent him on earth. The Bible calls you God's workmanship. You are his ambassador. This is because the moment you said yes to the gospel, you were no longer in darkness. You were now translated into God's kingdom. You are created in the image of God. The spirit of God dwells in you. So you have the ability to do all he has called you to do because you are not alone. He goes before and behind you, just like he did to Abraham and the saints of old. Abraham was called by God to go out to his father's house, to a place that God will show him. The truth was, he did not know where he was heading towards. All he knew was that he was obeying God's voice. Maybe there were times when he felt like going back. Maybe there were times where people mocked him for following his convictions, but he chose to follow God's voice. The fact that you are obeying God's instruction does not mean that there will be no stumbling blocks ahead. Remember this. Obedience is, not, is better than sacrifice. The reason why God created you is to reflect his glory on the earth. So you are not just an ordinary person. You are not just someone who lives for nothing. You have a purpose to live, and for that purpose is to reveal God on the earth. The will of God for all humanity is that men will glorify his name. He wants all men to turn away from darkness to his light. The Bible calls you a royal priesthood, a chosen nation, a peculiar person. You are the light of the world. You are the salt of the earth. You bring direction when there is confusion. There is your reality. How do you walk in all of that? God has called you to do. The first step is surrendering your life to God. He is Lord over your life. You must make a choice to yield yourself to him. This is because God will never force you to do his will. He will never force you to love him or serve him because he wants you to love him with all the whole of your life. The second step, spending time alone with him. You cannot walk in all that God has called you to do if you do not spend time with him. This is 
how you will come to know and understand what he wants you to do. When you spend time in his presence, you receive clarity on what area that he would want you to focus on. You spend time alone with God in prayer. Prayer, as they say, is communication with the Father. This is communication with him. It is how God tells you what he wants you to do. Prayer is just not about the bad things times. The Bible instructs us to pray without ceasing. This means that in every decision that you make, prayer should be the first on your list. The fact that it is God does not necessarily mean that it is God. I'm sorry. The fact that it is good does not necessarily mean that it is God. You can always spend time with God in the place of the Word. Jesus said that the words that He speaks are spirit and they are life. So you must recognize that God's Word has the ability to change a man. Number three, trust God. Be rest assured that God has a plan for you. His thoughts towards you are thoughts of good. You may not be able to fully understand all that he has said or called to you, but that's when you would need to trust the process. I'm sorry, I can't talk. To trust the process. You will also do well to calm down, especially when you do not get the results that you wanted or expected. The Bible says that all things work together for the good of them that love God, to those that are called according to his purpose. You are called according to his purpose. Therefore, you need not be troubled, because God is with you at all the way. In the good times and in the seemingly bad times, he will stand by you, and he will give you the wisdom for this journey. Amen.